Hello, I'm Watermelon Flynn, and you're hearing this from the Blues Kitchen. We first saw Watermelon Slim playing in Clarksdale, Mississippi back in 2013. Five years later, and he's made his way over to London for a show at the Blues Kitchen in Camden. His debut, Merry Airbreaks, was released in 1973, and his most recent album, Golden Boy, has been spinning constantly on our stereo since its release last year. We met up before the show to discuss his younger years in North Carolina, hearing John Lee Hooker for the very first time, and learning to play the guitar in Vietnam. And Slim performs a version of Mississippi Fred McDowell's 61 Highway. And while you're watching, subscribe to the channel for regular episodes of The Blues Kitchen Presents. Watermelon Slim, yes. welcome. So lovely uh, to have you here. We're, uh, we're very grateful to be here. Uh, we, uh, we try to get to England as, as often as we can over the last 20 years. When was the last time you were in, in England? 2013. So that's funny. So 2013, I wanted to hold off telling you this. We were in Clarksdale. And we went to a little cafe one night and we got wind of the fact there was a benefit being played for T-Model Ford yeah. because his house was in a sorry state of affairs. Yeah. And you were playing that night. And furthermore, I was, the, I was the moving man that moved him out of that house, his family out of that house, to the house, in, uh, to his last house in which he eventually died. And do you remember that night? Do you remember that gig? No, I don't remember <laughs> don't the gig, but I remember the moving job very well. And obviously, God rest his soul, he's not with us anymore. I think he died quite no, shortly he after died, that, he didn't he? died very soon after that. But that night, when we kind of walked into this cafe on the high street in Clarksdale, we saw you play, and there's a couple of other people. But at the end, we shook hands with you and said, look, we've got this place in England, we've got this place in London, you have to come over and play. And now, five years later, you're sat here and it's finally happened. I don't, I don't remember the gig at all, but then I, I, I don't, I generally I don't remember gigs. It, it takes a very special gig far away for me to remember as, uh, as say, the uh, uh, Festival Passion in Cognac. Let's rewind a little, if we may, because yes. you, you grew up, you were just saying, before the camera started rolling, um, in Carolina. Asheville, North Carolina. And I was watching an interview that you did with someone else a few years back, and you said that one of your first memories was hearing the lady that worked at your house, yeah. um, singing John Lee Hooker tunes. Yes. And that was kind of your introduction to, to blues, is that correct? 1954. Perhaps you could elaborate on that story uh, a little. In 1954, Beulah Huggins was the, was the lady's name. She, this was still in segregation in America. Yeah. And uh, she cooked and cleaned and took care of me and my little brother in the house in North Carolina. And she'd be singing what we later came to know as John Lee Hooker music. I said, you didn't oh, know. my mama won't allow me to stay out all night long, and stuff like that. And she'd improvise on it. One bourbon, one scotch, one little bitty beer. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, we, uh, uh, I first heard what was the blues in 54. But I didn't know it was blues then. I didn't know anything about it. I just knew I liked it. And the, the next kind of stage, of, I've tried to find out about you, but it's a little bit confusing, <coughs> is when you actually first picked up an instrument and started playing, because some sources said that it was when you were in Vietnam. That and was the guitar. That was when you started playing guitar, but harmonica was first, right? In 1959, I started playing harmonica. But 1958, I had my first instrument, and that was a set of bongos. Okay. I thought beatniks were cool. <laughs> and my mother actually allowed me to have a set of, well, they weren't toys. They were, they were actual bongos, but they weren't LPs or anything. They right. were tunable. They had uh, leather hold-downs rather than, rather than tuners. Right, I see. But I'm, I, I consider myself a percussionist. Then when you're in Vietnam, this guitar falls in your hands, does it? Right. I mean, how did that come about? And uh, I got sick. I got some sort of a disease and was sent to the 926, the back hospital in Cameron Bay, a beautiful place if you tune out the uh, uh, strafing runs and bombing runs on the, on the hills around. Yeah. And I uh, met this old gentleman in a, a commissary that was no bigger than a third of this bar size, and he was uh, using an old hand sewing machine to uh, stitch 
people's uh, unit patches and rank and stuff like that, various insignia. Oh, onto their clothes, you mean, and their jackets? Yeah. And, uh, and, and because I spoke French, we were able to communicate. And he had this old, the, the nastiest looking old balsa wood guitar <laughs> sitting in a corner of this tiny commissary. I said, how much is that? Five dollars. I happened to have five dollars military payment certificates in my pocket. I said, here. And I took it and I began to play with the Zippo cigarette lighter while I was recovering from the illness that I had. So maybe we should make this clear for anyone watching. Sly guitar is normally played with a bottleneck or something like that. Correct. But as long as it's got a round edge, you can pretty much sit down and get some kind of sound out of it. Exactly. People have played with knives, but you've got your own selection I of tools. I will show you my, my collection of improvised slides. At least that don't worry. <laughs> uh, this, is a, this is from Australia. Uh, this one is uh, Bush Mills, uh, uh, which I got on an airline. <laughs> And this is a one-inch spanner. <laughs> and uh, how, how do they sound? Are they all nice and got uh, a different the, tone? Uh, this one and this one sound about the same. This one's a little lighter. I'll give. I'll show you the uh, the Bush Mills first, which is uh, just regular Bush Mills. It's not cask strength. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got the, got the shell from Australia. Did you find that yourself? No, I was given this. Oh, you were given it. This okay. is also a piece of motion. Got this idea of you diving down to the bottom of the ocean to pick it up. No, 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 no. Uh, too many sharks. Uh, <laughs> this, was, uh, uh, this was given to me, and the idea of mojo, as is a mojo hand, the idea of mojo is that you are given mojo. Now, if you want to do black magic, you can steal something and then use it as the fetish to do whatever you want to do. But this was gifted to you. But I do not practice black magic. I only practice white magic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I do practice it. Yeah? Yes. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that after you've demonstrated. <laughs> as you can hear, that one's a little heavier than... A bit warmer the, the as well, one. isn't it? Yes. And we get to this here. Brilliant. Just like that. So if that wasn't being used as a slide, that would be what, changing truck tires or something uh, like that? Yeah. <laughs> something yeah, like that. <laughs> something, depending on what the size of the, uh, of the bolt that it would go on to. In the early 70s, when you returned from Vietnam, you met Bonnie Raitt. In 1972, and I'll tell you exactly about that because it's a good story. So I met Bonnie Raitt in 1972, July the 3rd, at a demonstration by Vietnam Veterans Against the War, mm -hmm. which I remain a coordinator today. Yep. And Bonnie came to support us with her bass player and drummer. It was the first time I ever played with her. I was a wannabe at this point. Uh, after the, the after party, I asked <laughs> her for Fred's address because I knew he was sick. I wanted to write him. I didn't know how sick he was, but I knew he was, he was having cancer. And uh, so I wrote him the next day, July 4th, our Independence from Britain day. We wish you had kept it. <laughs> July the 9th, which was Friday, I found out that he had died on July the 3rd when I got his wow. address. So I wrote to him the day after he died. That's my death letter blue. No, oh, how sad. Um, and did you ever meet anyone around him and, and family after he'd passed away? Family? No, I've never met any of Fred's family. But I do take people, not infrequently, to Fred's grave west of Como, Mississippi. Where you've been known to go and sing as well, right? I, I in fact, sing one of Fred's songs when, when I'm looking out over the hills to the west at sunset. Fred has a, there's a, a high durability laminated photograph of Fred on his gravestone. And I stand here and the gravestone is there 
a nice thing. Keep your lamp all trimmed and burning. I sing that song. And that's what you're going to do today, isn't it? You're going to do a Fred Madachium. Yeah. Highway 61? That's right. Maybe you could tell us about how that kind of first made its way into your consciousness, that tune. Well, the first time I ever actually was on the Mississippi part of Highway 61, mm -hmm. I came down to Clarksdale to apply for a job in the Delta Blues Museum. Oh, really? Because I was a graduate student in history at that point. Mm -hmm. So I had nominally the credentials to be like the assistant curator of, in, in a museum. Uh, hours after I applied for the job there, I was, uh, first I was playing in a little bar, a little juke joint, and then very soon after that I was mugged and robbed and left for dead a few hundred yards from, uh, from that little juke joint. And then the hospital wouldn't treat me. The Northwest Regional Medical Center Blues, on my super chicken record, OPCP Blues, is the story of my being thrown out of town, not treated by the hospital, they refused to, and then thrown out of town by the police. So what happened? Uh, how did you get treated? What happened? I drove 555 miles back to Stillwater, Oklahoma, with a piece of jawbone sticking in my oh. gun. I'm lucky I had a good surgeon who put it all back together and I've got plates and pins running down both sides of my jaw. So you drove 550 miles basically with your jaw hanging off? Yes. Ouch. Do you know what I did when I first got to Oklahoma? I didn't go to the doctor because I didn't know where I was going to get the money to pay for it. Eventually an aunt of mine loaned me the money. But Oof. the first thing I did when I got back to Oklahoma was go fishing. <laughs> you catch anything? Yes. How big? Oh, bass. Nah, you know, not 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 bragging size bass, <laughs> but, but eating size bass. And with uh, multiple compound jaw fractures, I ate the fish that I caught. The doctor <laughs> okay. said, "How, how in the world did you not get blood poisoning? Having gotten mugged on Saturday, come to get the operation on Wednesday, and." Uh, he, he, say, he said, I, have the, I must have the constitution of a Mack truck, and I do. <laughs> you do, obviously you do. So is it on that 550-mile drive back when you heard Highway 61 no, by Fred McDowell? No, I, I, I'd heard the song going all the way back before I even went to Vietnam. Oh, I see. Okay, I, I heard it on that record called I Do Not Play No Rock and Roll, mm -hmm. which you're probably familiar mm -hmm. with by a most people would say that was Fred's greatest record. Yeah, I'm familiar with that record. Well, I reckon it's time for a musical performance. I'm Watermelon Slim. My real name is Bill Homans, and I'm a man of Kent. But that's another story. And this song I learned from Fred McDowell 50 years ago or more, and it's called Highway 61. I live about a mile and a half from that road. Yeah, boy, die for me. 
Minneapolis to the Gulf of Mexico. Gonna buy me a pony, teach you to pace and cry and run. Take him out on the racetrack, down on Highway 61. Subscribe to The Blues Kitchen for live performances and interviews with the hottest blues, soul, country and roots musicians in the world today. You know some people say boys are both greyhounds.